Hello and thank you for tuning in the Faith Encounter Ministries broadcast. I am your host, Evangelist Mildred Ann Clark. I thank God that all of you have taken out the time to tune into this broadcast. You might have seen my shows in the past several weeks, couple of months, and you have seen repeats. Amen. But I thank God that I am here on today ministering to you, new, to you via the word of God. Um, Happy New Year. I know it's late. This is like almost mid-March. Amen. Uh, Merry Christmas. I hope your holidays were great and happy March unto you. But I thank God that again that you have taken out the time to listen to this broadcast. All right. You know, all the time I've always done a series and we are in a new series on today. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm starting a spirit zone series. We will be talking about the different spirits that are discussed in the Bible. Amen. And how many of you know you need the Holy Spirit in order to obtain the other spirits that I will be talking about in these next couple of weeks? Our first spirit, we're going to talk about the spirit of intercession Amen. Any intercessors out there, you know the value of interceding for your loved ones, interceding for spiritual leaders, interceding for your country. Amen. It is very valuable to have a spirit of intercession. Amen. But before we go any further, I'm going to have a little word of prayer. We're going to take it from here. Father God, we thank you right now for your outstretched hand for your tender mercy, for your loving kindness. God, I thank you for every listener out there. We ask that you touch each and every one. We ask that you mend every broken heart, regulate the mind, touch sick bodies, and heal right now, deliver, and set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this word fall on good ground. Break up the follow ground now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. The spirit of intercession. What can be described as intercession? Well, basically, intercession is just uh, praying on behalf of others. Um, we all know that Jesus was that chief intercessor. Yes, he's the chief intercessor that prays to the Father for the born again believer. Amen. He prays to the Father for the people of God. Uh, we thank God. Amen. Um, let's go to first Timothy chapter two, verses one through two. He said, I exhort therefore the first of all supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for Kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet life and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Paul tells Timothy in his pastoral letters, let's pray for everybody. Let's not pray for people in the body of Christ, but let's pray for the people who are leading the communities that we in. Let's pray for, uh, Let's pray for our mayor. Let's pray for the governor. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray for the senators. Why? So we can have a peaceable life. Now, you may say that there is no peace, but you'll have peace as you intercede because you know what you've done. Amen. To try to uh, make this world a better place. You're, you're going to always have sinners. We know that we, you're going to always have something uh, in this world. Jesus said the prince of this world come. I've got to leave here because the prince of this world is here. And, you know, and I get that. But in, in, in any event, you pray for people in authority. That is very important. I want to go to first Thessalonians one and two. Praise God. Excuse me. I have my PowerPoint on my phone. Amen. So it's easier to carry. Praise God. First Thessalonians one and two. We give thanks to God always for you, 
making mention of you in our prayers. He says, when we pray for you, you are your name is called out in prayer. That's basically what he's you know, saying. You know, you see the individuals, people who have prayer groups and prayer is very I'm very passionate about prayer. I'm very passionate about prayer. I'm I'm the type that when I do start praying, I'm not just praying I, uh, one hour. I do, you know, at least two to three hours to get that intimacy, you know, to hear from God. Amen. And I do uh, have others that require and, and request that that I pray, you know, uh, for them. Um, sometimes I have a little prayer list. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do mention people by name. Sometimes I mention people by name within my heart because God knows. Amen. But I have a passion to pray for people because somebody ain't got nobody to pray for them. You know, I, I think about sometimes I sometimes I'll pray for somebody. And I'll say, look on that mom who's worried about her child. Uh, I think about that woman who's worried about her marriage or vice versa. So I have a tendency to have compassion for people. I may not look like it. I may not act like it, but I do try to intercede for others. Amen. And with, the, you know, I do get results. Amen. Because I believe God. I choose to believe God. But anyway, he tell the Thessalonians, you are mentioned in our prayers. We love you. And this is why we pray for you. Um, this is why you're mentioned in our prayers. Because we love you. Amen. And intercession, there has to be a great desire. Amen. A love for prayer. A love to get with God. But a love to pray for the needs of the people. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can't necessarily give or, uh, and, and, and I do that as well. But sometimes that prayer will cover all things. Sometimes it turn somebody else's uh, situation around. I am talking to that intercessor that loves to pray and that loves to reach heaven and know when or she has reached the throne of grace. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 18. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. He's praying for everybody. He's praying for all the saints. Amen. Perseverance is consistency in prayer. The intercessor is going to always pray because he or she has a passion to pray. Uh, they're not going to wait to get on a prayer line. They're not going to wait necessarily to get to the house of God. And I, and I, I respect the prayer lines, those of you who have it, because prayer is very much needed globally not just for the united states but globally and i'm for going into the temple to pray because the house of god needs the glory god's glory to enter in but the intercessor uh has that secret place the intercessor deals goes into the secret closet and pray seeking god for his or her family seeking God for any situation. The intercessor prays with consistency. Amen. I've had people to come and tell me that's too much praying. Uh, that's too much fasting. And I beg to differ because the world that we live in, Jesus said these things come by just through fasting and praying. So the intercessor will pray with consistency. Supplication is just being honest, being earnest, being sincere in prayer. So the real intercessor will pray with earnesty and will pray with consistency. Amen. Why? Because he or she has a passion to pray. Hallelujah. First Samuel 12 and 23 say, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing 
to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and right way. In this particular scripture, the Israelites, amen. If you know anything, the Israelites wants another king. Um, long time, the Israelites were a nation without a king. But they wanted a king and they wanted Samuel to pray for them a king. And Samuel goes to God and God grants their request. Samuel discusses the, he discusses the pros and cons of having a king. Amen. And um, this nation is anointed. The Israelites War was an anointed nation, but they wanted a king um, like everybody else. And God, uh, like I said, God honored their request, but there would be some consequences in them having a king. So, but Samuel said, but I'm going to pray for you anyway. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pray. Amen. Because Samuel was a communicator to God for the Israelites. Let's go to Numbers 21 and 7. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. In this case, I'm looking at my notes. The Israelites complained to Moses about being in the wilderness <laughs> after coming out of captivity. Uh, Moses led the Israelites out of bondage of the Egyptians. However, they complain about not having any water and bread. The Lord uh, sent snakes with fire and much people died as a result. The Israelites come to realization that God is real. And they plead with Moses to pray that the serpents, you know, that everything cease. That the quote unquote judgment or slash punishment be stopped. Uh, God is a God of justice. And, in, you know, nobody wants to talk about God being the God of justice. We focus on his grace. And I thank God for grace. Amen. But uh, in this case, amen, Moses was that anointed leader. And God chose Moses to lead. Amen. Uh, this nation. Amen. And the people didn't like the decisions. They didn't like uh, ways that was done. Amen. So, hey, God sins and he allows serpents with fire to come up and burn. And that was the judge judgment of those people. Um, let's go to Romans 8 and 26. We're still talking about intercession. Intercession is just praying on the behalf of. Uh, of another amen likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit uh, itself maketh intercession with the groaners which cannot be others sometimes when there is a great desire to intercede for someone else Sometimes it's just not good to pray aloud because uh, you don't never know who's around, but you can utter something in that heart and within the mind with your thought. And you can say, God, whatever it is, do it. God, whatever it is, make it happen. Uh, do it for the individual. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. And God will honor thee request of that intercessor we're going to Daniel 9 and 3 and I prayed unto the Lord my God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes Daniel began to intercede for his country if you read the whole story and I'm going to suggest that you take some time and read the entire uh, chapter of uh, Daniel chapter 9 uh, and get the whole concept of the story but Daniel intercedes 
for his community and the citizens of his country. He does this. Now, Daniel had an excellent spirit, number one. He had an excellent spirit. Uh, but as he prays, he does it with earnesty and humility along with fasting. Uh, because he wants to get clarity. He wants an answer from God. Sometimes you have to do the extra when you really want to hear from God. And uh, prayer and fasting, we know what fasting is. Some of us uh, do the Daniel fast. Some go day and night. Amen. Without a meal, just only drinking water. Amen. Some people call the Daniel fast just a, basically a diet. Some say a real fast is when you go without Amen. Food. Amen. And I do understand there are some that have medical conditions. Amen. But there is something that you can maybe you can not watch uh, TV all day and just, uh, you know, just commit unto the Lord. You know, every day should be committed unto the Lord. Amen. But this spirit of intercession is is very important for the believer to have. And you get people that say, I know you got to pray and 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 I don't believe in all that praying and oh do we have to pray all that all all that time well it's not how long you pray it's about your faith that goes along with it okay because there are prayers that are being prayed they're not effective because there's a lack of faith and let me just say this when you are praying there there needs to be some sincerity coming from your heart amen you know he say pray for your enemies amen and 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 love them and pray for those that despitefully use you amen this is this is a version of turning the other cheek and i i i understand i've, I've said this before in, in previous broadcasts i understand amen how someone can make you mad and someone can make you upset and People who have been in positions, amen, whether it was uh, the supervisor or whatever, but you still respect, amen, God will. And I, I'm, I'm going over this again, fight your battle, but you put it into the hands of the Lord and how so by interceding and, 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 you know, I know what it's like to be falsely accused, amen, of something you know that you didn't do. Amen. But God, but God, God will turn that thing around. Hallelujah. He will turn that thing around. Amen. And will give you a peace that passeth all understanding. As I'm discussing the spirit of intercession, I'm also discussing the benefits of it. And one of the benefits of intercession is having a peace within, uh, that hunger, that thirst of wanting more of God. You know, just don't go to prayer, uh, in prayer, asking, bless me, bless me, bless me. You need to sit yourself down with that. Amen. There are people that, you know, when you take up care of God's business via intercession, with earnesty and with consistency, God will take care of your business. Come on here, somebody. Amen. So, don't always go down and say <clears throat> and intercede for yourself praying those selfish prayers <clears throat> but intercede to get a close relationship with god i want to go to um colossians one and three we give thanks to god and the father of our lord jesus christ praying always for you He's telling the Colossians, we're always praying for you. We thank God for you because we're praying for you. You need to thank God. Amen. Thank God for the things that he's done in your life. Amen. I've learned to praise God for the little things because uh, to me, everything God do, whether small or great, everything he does is great. When you get this unconditional love in your heart i mean really get it down on the inside you will have a different viewpoint of life itself because you have a peace within 
that passeth all understanding. Amen. When I said I love God because it's fun loving God, I really mean that. I really mean that. I really love the Lord. I don't understand him. Praise God. No, I don't. But there's a song, an old song that say, we'll understand it better by and by. And I can vouch for that. As you go on, you'll understand it. You, you, you say, I don't know why I went through this. And you know, when you're going through it, you say, why? Why am I going through this? Amen. When a person is talking about you, insulting you and, and lying on you, and you know you ain't done nothing. You know you're, you're standing within the parameters uh, of, of, of obedience. Amen. There's a peace that come, comes in. And I remember I was complaining of, of what somebody had done to me. And I, 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 the scripture came to me, said, but they did it to me also. And uh, we got to know that we got to bear our cross, that, that if, if, if the Lord went through, amen, we're going to have to go through because we are a disciple of his. Amen, somebody. I just bless God on today. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 18. He said, pray for us, for we trust. We have good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. The author is requesting prayer from the Hebrews. He lets them know that, uh, that pray that we have a good conscience, amen, to live honestly in every aspect of life, amen. So, the intercessor will have a good conscience. And one thing about praying all the time, having the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, as I like to say, you will have a conscience. Amen. Uh, you're not so quick to do wrong. And if you do wrong, it, you will be convicted. Amen. You will be convicted of it. Praise God. Amen. And let me just say this. I'm hearing in my spirit to let somebody know that there is no failure in God. There may be failure in man. But there is no failure in God. Amen. What God has promised you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going to flow with this thing. What God has promised you. I'm going to encourage you to stand on that promise. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. It, it may not look like it that it's going to come to pass. But you got to know that it's going to come to pass. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you on today to stand tall on the promises that's been made to you. Amen. That it's not going, whatever situation you're in, it's not going to be long. It's not going to be long. And I'm going to even suggest to you, don't you wait till the battle is over. I'm going to suggest to you, you get your shout on now because you have the victory. You have the victory and you've got to know that you've got the victory. Praise God. Amen. This is how faith. Amen. Stir us up. You don't see it. You, sometimes you don't even feel it. But I'm confirming to you that you have victory. And I'm, I'm led to say that it's not going to be long. Revelations 8 and 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. This is the one I like. Ascended up before God out of the angels' hands. Amen. Intercessors, you know who you are. You know you can pray. You know your prayers reaches heaven. You've seen the evidence because you've applied the faith. You pray with sincerity and you did it consistency. Amen. Your prayers is like a smoke that goes up to the throne of grace out of the angel's hand. And God has to honor that prayer. I thank God. Amen. Again, for you tuning in to the Faith Encounter Ministries Amen broadcast. Please tune in next time. I thank God for the faithful viewers. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And
until we meet again. You be blessed in the Holy Ghost. <laughs>